Sometimes when you're on the path to recovery from retroactive jealousy, it can be quite difficult to sort of ascertain your progress and how you're doing really and to get a kind of honest perspective on that. There is one way that if used sensitively can provide some insight that will really give you an idea about how you're actually doing in your recovery journey. Now, what I'm about to share with you, my dear ones, can actually be applied to challenges other than retroactive jealousy and just can be used generally as well. So I hope you find it useful. So we're in the realm of dreams. Now, Who am I? Why am I talking about dreams? (laughs) Welcome, my dear ones. My name is Gwendolyn and I am a psychoanalytic psychotherapist. You have probably stumbled upon my channel, perhaps through my husband, Mark, who is better known in the space of retroactive jealousy recovery, because really he is the foremost clinician in the world at this time in terms of expertise and lived experience as well. He's actually a qualified clinician, right? So that makes him extremely rare in the world, right? To have those three components. However you found me, I just want to offer you that warm welcome. And so the realm of dreams is absolutely my realm. And this is a highly complex area. If you know me and you have already had some contact with my content, you'll know that I try and keep things quite straightforward and simple. So the world of psychoanalysis is kind of renowned for being kind of a bit almost esoteric and a bit lofty and even kind of irrelevant to many people seemingly, when actually, absolutely, it would solve so many problems if many of us, more of us, were actually aware of what it really is rather than secondhand knowledge of quotes by Freud and misunderstandings about that. It's very, very difficult. It is very dense. So I'm going to try and distill it and distill this idea of making use of your dreams into some simple steps that I think could be quite transformative for some of you. I suggest, my dear one, that you pause the video just for a second and go grab a pen and paper. And again, if you can, if writing is okay for you by hand, I really encourage you to do that. When we write with a pen and paper or pencil and paper, it's very different what happens in our brain versus using our technology, our devices, okay? So I want you to take notes, okay? You'll find it more useful than just listening, okay? So go ahead, pause the video and let's come back in just a second. Bring your cup of tea as well. (laughs) I'm a British girl, right? (laughs) Black Brit, you know, cups of tea is just essential. (laughs) Okay, so welcome back, my dear ones. I hope you've got your pen and paper or pencil and pad. Let's get into this. I'm going to break it down to just a few steps. I think there are four. Number one is in order to do this successfully, I encourage you to join with me now in taking a few deep breaths, okay? So however you're seated or perhaps you're in bed listening to this, if you're lying down in any position or space, go ahead and straighten your spine. Just turn your head so that it's square rather than turning your face to one side or another. And the reason why this is important, if you don't know, by the way, I'm also a yoga teacher, right? Multi-talented renaissance woman. I'm the original. (laughs) I'm kidding, kind of. (laughs) So the point is, my loves, it's really important to have your spine in alignment whenever we do any breath work. Same goes if you're seated. Make the spine nice and straight and tall, okay? Really think about that. It's not going to come easy to you unless you already have a regular practice. And this will really facilitate what we're going to do. Okay, shoulders relaxed. If you like, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. Or if you don't like closing your eyes, focus your gaze, lower your gaze, just to kind of calm down distraction from the room, from the birds outside, from wherever you are, and minimize the light coming into your brain, which is another distraction. So ideally, close your eyes. Otherwise, lower your gaze and fix it on one point. Okay, now let's take some breaths together. Inhale through your nose. 
deep, full breath. Good. Inhale. Hold the breath. And we're going to exhale through pursed lips, making a sound. Does that make sense? Let's try that again. Stay exactly as you are, nice and calm. Just check the shoulders are still relaxed. The spine is straight. Inhale through your nose. Slowly and deeply. And this time I want you to see if you can elongate that exhalation. Really empty your lungs. One last time. Inhale through your nose. Shoulders relaxed, chest is soft. Exhale through those pursed lips, make a whoosh sound. And thank you for trusting me with that and doing that with me, okay? It's all about just calming the nervous system. Generally, our days are so frenetic and hectic. We're constantly on our phones. Our minds are so distracted, it's very difficult to even try to recall a dream if our minds are in that kind of more heightened state that we usually are in the day-to-day -day world, right? So I hope now you're feeling a little bit calmer. Just quietly check in with yourself. How are you feeling? Just notice that, okay? And this is a good moment as well to just pause where you are with that awareness of your feeling. And if you're not feeling okay, if you're feeling emotional or unsettled in any way, really encourage you, my dear, no harm in just stopping where you are, pausing the video, go ahead, save it to one of your playlists and come back to it, okay? It's no drama, no big deal. You can come back to things, okay? All right, assuming you're okay, we'll go on. I want you to think back to your last dream that you can recall quite easily, Right. Don't strain yourself thinking about, oh, God, I can't remember. You know, just for a second, allow your mind to wander. And it might be just a fragment. That's enough. Right. It doesn't have to be a full dream. A lot of us don't remember our dreams. And, you know, that's in part, you know, assuming you have a baseline of health. Obviously, most people in the world now have been affected by a virus that we all know what that is and that unfortunately has ramifications on how your brain and nervous system function so our baselines are not going to be all the same but if your baseline is generally one of decent health then sometimes the reason why we can't remember our dreams is in part due to mineral deficiencies some kind of um, nutritional deficiency so that's just food for thought for you and it might be that this sparks something for you about investigating, you know, your nutrition with someone qualified to do that with you, talk to your doctor, etc. Right. But it's something if that's important to you and if you kind of are one of those people who would like to remember your dreams, something to consider. So while we just allow the awareness to just float around, just let your mind wander and think back to what your last dream was. Is there, was there something momentous that happened in your life? And even if you can't remember a recent dream, sometimes we remember dreams that go way back, right? We'll use that, okay? Because partly this is a kind of learning exercise as well. And obviously our overriding aim here is to use a dream as a kind of temperature check on what's really going on with us. You know, again, I know from my clinical work, when I work with my patients, quite often... The day-to-day -day is so hectic that, that many of us feel disconnected from ourselves, cut off from ourselves. This is a way, in my view, to really cut to the chase. Dreams kind of, kind of bypass all the BS and go straight to the core where we really are at, right? How we're really feeling. Have you remembered a dream? Okay, great. Okay, and again, if you haven't remembered... It's really okay. You can always pause this video. No doubt when you pause it, you go and wash the dishes or you make yourself a cup of coffee, you'll remember because <laughs> that's just sod's law, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so don't sweat it. If it doesn't come, just let it be. Come back to it later. If you remembered a dream, what I want you to do first of all is just think about the overriding feeling of the dream 
Or there might have been several feelings in the dream. Just the mood, the vibe, the atmosphere. Go ahead, pause and write some words down. We want feeling words. Was it sad? Was it happy? Was it joyful? Was it disgusting? Was it full of rage and anger? What were the feelings in your dream? Go ahead, write them down. Okay, moving on. And of course, guys, of course, you can always pause if you need a bit longer between thoughts. Just go ahead and take that. Now we want to look at who was in the dream, right? So maybe your mum or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your teacher was in the dream. I want you to write them down, but we're going to think about them as characters rather than the actual people who they are, right? So if it was your mum, that's fine. You can write mum was in the dream or girlfriend was in the dream or whatever. But I want you to kind of have in mind that we're thinking more about these people rather than the people we know and love as characters, right? It might also be useful as a kind of add-on to this to consider how you were kind of experiencing the dream yourself. Were you seeing everything as if watching a movie or were you kind of almost outside of yourself watching yourself? We all dream differently, right? I'm not going to make any assumptions. There's no right or wrong here. But be mindful of how you experienced yourself in the dream and the characters. Okay, go. So specifically what I want you to think about as a kind of iteration of what we just did, you're going to go ahead and then write down whoever those characters were, the representation of kind of what they symbolize in your life. So maybe your mother represents hopefully some sense of love or comfort, or maybe some more challenging aspects such as criticism. These are the words that might come through. Um, or someone who is very um, authoritarian, you know, or whatever, go ahead and write down now what these characters represent in your life, right? Just write down some words again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, go. So now what I want you to think about, again, in addition to what we've just done, building on that. We want to think now in more kind of archetypal themes, right? So for example, let's go back to the example of say you've got a mum who's actually really always been really like a teacher, someone quite strict and um, that you respect and admire maybe, but quite hard, right? And she's not the kind of soft, fluffy mum that, you know, gave you money to go to the movies when you're a kid and I don't know, <laughs> darned your socks and stuff, you know. She was a kind of more tough mum, but more like a kind of sports coach or something, you know. I'm just making this up, okay. But let's say, so yeah, so that would, that could potentially be an archetype that you would assign to this character who in truth is your mum, but now we're thinking more in character and archetype. So go ahead and write down again, whatever comes to mind next to those characters. So you might have you know, your girlfriend could be like a goddess, right? And which goddess, you know? So, and if you don't know anything about goddesses, go ahead and do some Googling, right? And then you'll soon start to see the qualities, right? Go ahead and do that now, okay? Take your time with this. Remember, you can always pause the video for as long as you need, and then we'll move on, okay? Final part of this exercise, my dear ones. I now want you to consider, after all of the notes that you've made, you're going to look at this again in a minute with fresh eyes, okay? Because this is the interesting bit. And remember, all of this stuff is just one way, one of a million versions that we can approach dreams. But what I've given you here is something quite generic, okay? So obviously, when my patients come to me with their dreams, we can get super specific. And I know my patients, that's my job, to understand who they are. So obviously, there's no cookie cutter, there's no generic, right? Everything is a unique, one-of-a-kind thing. That's what makes the experience of 
good psychoanalytic psychotherapy so precious because it's so unique to each individual there's no cbt kind of tick boxes how do you feel on a scale of one to ten that's anathema to us quite frankly even though the world has space for cbt a lot more space than for us but let's not go there (laughs) okay let's move on to this final point what i want you to do now is to go back and look at your notes and consider that everything you have written all the notes, all the characters, all the archetypes. Consider that everything in your dream is you. Okay, you suitably horrified (laughs) or maybe pleased, right? Try not to dive into defense mode with what I've just said, like, oh, well, that's not right. You know, sometimes we get like that because we're feeling a bit confronted or it's really not comfortable what we've what we're looking at, right? So I want you to try your best to kind of set that aside for a moment. Remember, you don't have to buy into this permanently. Nothing's permanent, right? (laughs) So humor me, humor yourself. Let's play with this and consider that everything, everyone and every feeling in your dream is you. Now, if you consider that, you will have a great, potentially, a great insight into where you really are. Please feel welcome to share in the comments whatever feels comfortable to you to share. This is deep stuff. I appreciate that. You might feel like I'm definitely not sharing nothing that I've written, right? I get it. It's fine. Equally, remember in life that we get what we give, right? Sometimes we have to make ourselves a wee bit vulnerable in order to actually receive some gift in exchange. And I'm not saying to put yourself in harm's way to make yourself feel uncomfortable. Although obviously sometimes in life we do need to feel uncomfortable in actually in order to progress. So that's also true. But this is a public forum. So of course, be careful, be mindful. But think about the fact that sometimes what we write, what we speak, what we say sparks something for another that if they're feeling brave enough to and chime in, you suddenly have magic happen where insights, light bulbs, and flashes of insight can come that you just would never have imagined and could never have dreamed of or received without that first step of courage. So that's the reason why I say sometimes if we feel okay and it resonates with our heart and we're like, okay, this does feel okay to share. It's a little bit out there, maybe weird, but I'm going to share it anyway, especially because most of you guys do not have profile pictures, right? (laughs) And I know I've got a lot of lurkers, right? I really can only hope that you're getting something from this content, those of you who are lurkers. We need a better word, don't we? I don't really like the connotations of that word. But those of you who are in the shadow, let's say, who don't actually comment, you know, I would actually ask a favour, though, that can you like the video, right? Sometimes we forget that we are receiving a gift every time we engage with another person's content that we find useful. And really, a like is free. And yet it makes a big difference to the creator who's offered you something for free, often with a lot of love and positive intention and the time it takes for them to make the content. So this isn't just for me, it's especially for smaller creators, though, that I really encourage you to be mindful of how you give, how you give back and that in life we can never just take, take, take that really causes a lot of imbalance, a lot of disharmony on our lives. It's a great metaphor for your recovery also, right? Initially, we have to receive a lot and we're healing, we're hurting. But as soon as that's able to kind of shift in a healthy way, we can start to reciprocate a little bit. That's great. Okay, so little bonus tip for you and a request. So thank you. Thank you for your time. Great to have this engagement with you. Really hope this helps. I'd love to hear your comments if you feel comfortable. Remember to like, comment. You can always share this content too if you know someone who might benefit from it. Thank you, my dear ones. And I will see you in the next one. Kia ora.